good to go. Okay, well, good morning. I'm James Brewster. I work for Bell Geospace. Okay, you go. And the topic of this um, this talk this morning is is about um, gold exploration using full tensor of gravity gradiometry in West Africa, which we feel is a case study that really gives a good example of how this technology can be used for prospect level exploration. Uh, my co my um, colleague James Mataraggio is really the lead author on this paper, but he couldn't be here today because he's actually in Africa talking to a client. So, so I hope you find it interesting. So the full tensor gravity gradiometer, in case you're not familiar with it, is a, is a washing machine sized piece of equipment. Uh, Belgia Space owns and operates three of these systems as a commercial enterprise. And it consists of an inertially stable, stabilized platform, which consists of three gradiometer instruments, each of which contains four accelerometers. This allows us to measure the full tensor of the gradient, which is the change in the gravity. The three components of the gravity change in three components of space, giving nine combinations, of which five are independent. I think you're going to see this data in the next talk, and this is what it looks like for a spherical source. Now, the geo ge geological setting for this project in West Africa, in the western part of the nation of Mali, there's a whole line of gold mines, and this is, this is the Birimian greenstone belt. And the gold, act, gold mining activity is, is centered along the edge of this greenstone, where it, where it meets the host rock, characterized by the Senegal Mali Fault. And there's various inliers that represent different stages of intrusive activity. Okay. And this actual survey is located near the Sadiola mine, which has been a very um, productive gold mine. And the client here, Legend Gold, was trying to look for similar gold in this, in this region. And as you can see, um, it's right on the edge of the greenstone belt. And um, the key phenomenon that the, th the theory for the gold formation here is that it's, that it's the, as the intrusions happen, you, you create the conditions for hydrothermal activity. And the target of this exploration is um, the alteration zones around this sh these shear faulting. So this is the acquisition pra parameters of the survey. This is a 100, me 100 meter line spacing. The system was flown in the Cessna Grand Caravan air aircraft, which is kind of the smallest aircraft it will really can practically be flown in. And this is an extremely small survey compared to our normal operations. This is three kilometer three kilometers long. In fact, recently we've done surveys that are larger in surface area by more than a factor of a thousand. But it's kind of something I want to illustrate here is that it shows how this technology can be used on such a small scale where appropriate. This actually only took 25 minutes of flying time, so it actually took more time to talk about this project than it did to fly it. And we fly as low as we're safely allowed to fly, which is 100 meters above the ground. And the contours of the, the terrain are shown here, and um, the terrain signal isn't really an issue on this survey. It's a very flat area. And here are the data readings. Um, here are the five independent components, six components of the tensor, five of which are independent. And um, each component of the gravity gradient um, highlights, highlights features in different directions. It just so happens that the, the XY component runs, um, highlights um, the, main, the main anomaly here. 
The most symmetrical one is the TZZ component, which is most directly associated with, with density changes. So I'll, I'll focus in on TZZ. And the feature of interest is this, this high in the middle of the survey and the low which surrounds it. And the interpretation we're, we're making of this is that it's the alteration zone that becomes of lower density and the meta sediments are lower density of this middle part which is a granitic intrusion. And it's the activity on the boundary of this intrusion that creates the conditions for gold mineralization. Now we measure these five components, but now I'm only looking at one. So it becomes very useful to create other interpretation tools that use the full, the full um, range of information that we acquire. And one of these is, is, arises from a paper by Pedersen and Rasmussen in 1990. And they proposed a method of estimating the local strike angle from the gradient measurements. And this formula returns the value of the direction along which the gradients are minimized which you can relate to the local direction in which the, which the geology, um, the strongest feature in the local geology. And you, when you draw these arrows, you can, you can plainly see the direction of this anomaly. And on the other side of the high, we've got another one here. Now, this visualization is most interesting when it differs from the TZZ um, anomalies, which, which you see over here. Another thing you can do when you know the key direction is you, um, you can change the axis on which you measure the gradient. Now, we measure the horizontal components, we call them X, Z, Y, Z. They're measured relative to north and east. Now, as far as the geology is concerned, north and east are arbitrary directions. So it's often more useful to re recalculate your gradients using the significant local direction. And when you look at the horizontal down gradient component relative to this direction, it lights up this uh, anomaly very clearly. And the low of this is where, it's where the, the regular, the conventional vertical gravity is changing most, most rapidly. And you can, you can very see the linear feature of this, linear character of this feature here. So we rang inversion on this data. We're using the Lee and Oldenburg method, um, actually using software supplied to us by Dr. Lee at the Colorado School of Mines. And this is a regularized adjustment of density values, and it's, it's working with all the tensor components, simultaneously fitting to all of them in a regularized inversion, regularized to minimize the local variations in the density. So it's, it's kind of like an optimally smooth fit to this. Um, to the data observations. And what we, the way we interpret this is that um, we've got the northeast trending shear zone in the, corresponding to where the gradient low was. And that's bounding this granitic intrusion here. And we get a density of 0.8, density contrast change of 0.8 for that central region. So we're predicting that they're going to find the gold along the boundary of this, of this thing. You can't really see the scale here, but this, this slab is um, 800 meters thick. So we also get an estimate of how deep this is, and also we get an estimate of how steeply, zip, steeply dipping the, the zone is, the shear zone. Maybe if we used the inversion in the previous talk, we could see this more clearly, but that's very interesting. So that's basically repeating what I just said. Now this survey was almost 10 years old, 
And um, in subsequent, subsequent years, the clients, even though we no longer have a relationship with them, have been publishing more, more data from this area. You know, they're trying to attract investors, and this is publicly public available information. And this is this um, implied uh, polarization survey. And this in the resistivity map shows these um, dolerite dikes that are in a different direction to the direction we, um, we observed. But if you zoom in there, they're just showing the outline of the gravity data here. But here they're publicizing the mineralization and some gold has been discovered up right where we predicted it would and also where we predicted it would on the other side. There's a resistivity high that corresponds to the gravity high in the center of this, kind of supporting what we were assuming. Another thing I find very interesting is that you go onto Google Earth for this um, area and you look at their timeline view, you can see that just last year, between last year and the, the previous map, you can see this um, scarring due to um, people just coming out onto this land and just digging. Um, or Appalach, informal mining activity. And kind of these people with their shovels are kind of confirming where the gold is to be found there. They've been, they've been digging here and here. So, so this case demonstrates how at prospect level you can use this gravity gradient technology. And the data has allowed definition of the, clear, of the key structures that associated with gold mineralization. Okay, well, thank you very much. Questions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if we just if we just took a standard line kilometer price and took the line kilometer length of that survey, it would be like ten or twenty thousand dollars for the whole thing, but we wouldn't do that. It's not commercially viable for us to do that. It would have to be a much larger. Yeah, we don't know. We've, no, it's such almost cheap enough that every home can have one, but um, um, it wouldn't be commercially viable. We usually have a 10 kilometer minimum line length. I have a quick question. Most yeah. of your survey, uh, your surveys for Uh, most of our gradiometry surveys for mining applications, and the answer is not for quite a few years. We've been doing mostly oil field work just because that's where we've been getting the contracts. But we did extensive work for Valley in Brazil, and we've done a lot of mining work, but just not recently. One other real quick question. When um, you were showing like, your principal component to look at strike as opposed to regular north and then east. Yeah. Do you ever do any filtering up or downward continuation to get different um, depths? Um? Yes, we do. Um, we do do frequency slicing too. You know, often when you're not interested in the shallow, the, sh the more shallow features, then then we use frequency slicing quite often to isolate features at certain depths. Um, this survey is so small, actually, that we normally would have a wavelength that's as long as this survey um, for an oil field survey. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Right. Yeah. So we try to avoid doing that when we do mining work, actually. Oh. Okay. Prefer to use it inversion. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Filtering is always like quick and dirty, though. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.